the other aspect of this story, which is which is interesting to me, because Paul Marsh came out and we we spoke about this, I don't know, a month ago, and I reckon I volcanoed him, Hazy, because he said, please respect the privacy of the players. Now, he was referring to Denny Van Hagen and some others, a Richmond player who had potentially tested positive in the AFLW and said, look, players' privacy must be respected. And I said, well, hang on. Uh, Denny herself's going to freedom rallies and putting it on social media and carrying on like an absolute goose. We're not respecting her privacy if she's so open about the whole aspect of this. So the dilemma for Juno's to report the name. Now, Mitch Cleary a couple of nights ago said it was a Carlton player, didn't name them. Sam McClure did last night, and this is why. Now, I want to get something mm. off my chest here, Jimmy, before we get into it. Yep, go ahead. Because a lot of people aren't going to be happy that we're here on Sports Day have named Liam Jones. Liam Jones is absolutely, as every Victorian and Australian is, entitled to A, their opinion, and B, their choice. Whatever Liam's reasons are for not being vaccinated, that is up to him. And it is, as far as I'm concerned, a private matter. But when it doesn't become private, Jimmy, and this is the hard part of journalism in some sense, is Liam's job is playing AFL. Anything that affects his ability, whether that be an injury or a decision or a suspension, to be able to fulfil his duties as an AFL player is, in my view, news that fans deserve to hear. I couldn't have said it better, Sam. And when people jump on, yeah, they, they, they might be upset. Uh, with both of us, they might be upset with uh, journalists or people reporting that he's out and he's been named. It's complete, utter respect for Liam Jones, and you and I are both the same. Pro-choice, make your decision. Absolutely. That's private. I, I don't need to know why you don't want the vax, or I don't even need to know why people choose to, to get the vax. Either way, that's just your decision, your world. But you're right. We have track watchers. We have journalists who report. We have players. So... Just imagine you're a player at Carlton and you've been training with the back six. Yep. Liam Jones is not there. Not allowed to be. He's not allowed to be. And you go home and you go, oh, how's, it, how's your training going? Oh, good. We're looking for a new fullback. What do you mean you're looking for a new fullback? You've got a very good one in Liam Jones. What, what's he supposed to say? Nothing? Like, mm. uh, you, round one, Thursday night against Richmond, there's 90,000 people in the team. Yeah, we're supposed to wait till the team sheets come out and go... No, Liam Jones. Why? No, oh. I mean, the senior players are due back on December 6th. I'm not sure why we have to wait until December 6th to talk about this. Now, if he changes his mind and gets vaccinated, yeah. he'll be welcomed back with open arms. No issue. But he has told the club, and I've spoken to the Carlton Football Club today, they're very well aware that Liam has told them that he does not wish to be vaccinated. We offered the Carlton Footy Club the option of coming on tonight. They declined. We offered Shane Cashley, who is Liam's manager, the option of him or Liam coming on tonight. Shane told us, quote, unquote, we do not comment on any play health issues. That's fine. And that's an an interesting point, which we could discuss at another time. So no one wants to talk about it. But ultimately, Carlton are there to do whatever you think about footy clubs. Carlton are there to do one thing, and that is to win games in order to win premierships. Yep. Luke Sayers, in his first address as Carlton's president, said that. Our ultimate ambition is to win games and our first job is to win flags. This affects that. The broader point as well is that this was heavily trending on Twitter. Liam Jones was heavily trending on Twitter before uh, Sam McClure had to name him. So people already knew. Correct. It was, it was inevitable that it would come out in a public space. So it's... It don't even bother trying to go after Sam McClure on that one. No, nah, there's no there's no leg to stand on there. I mean, the the public are out to. I mean, there's a there's a gripe against journalists. I, I think there's a uh, perception that they're you know grubby and and hiding in in bins and trying to get stories and doorstop people. Uh, this story is absolutely in the public interest of a football supporter and a paid up Carlton member. And the other thing this has done is it has removed the doubt over any other Carlton player. So I heard on Twitter, I saw multiple names. Yeah, Liam Jones's name was mentioned as possibly everyone speculating of who it would be. But I saw other players named, uh, probably five or six other players. So they any doubt over them has now been removed. Now, Jimmy you know, summed it up pretty well. When they're not returning to training and you're down there for Channel 7 and you're looking for who's injured and who's not, as you do weekly, Hazy, on a Wednesday, trying to work out which teams are going to be selected and a player's not training, you report that. If Jake Kelly's got a hammy and he's not training and he's off to get a scan, you report that on the news. Mm. So it's exactly the same. If Liam Jones isn't there because he's not vaccinated and he's not able to be selected, 
it is in the Carlton fans' interest. Now, they're right. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't agree with his choice not to be vaccinated. I think in a team sport um, like AFL, it is all about the team. And, and this is in some way putting the, the individual before the team and, and hurting his team and their plight to win a premiership. And that's okay. He'll have to wear the ramifications of that. And that is probably finishing his career prematurely, unfortunately. No one likes the situation with, that we're in, but it's the only way out. So I fully support the AFL's stance on this. And I fully support Sam McClure's right uh, and job as a journalist to name him. The same way he named Taylor Walker. You, you reckon the Taylor Walker racism row wasn't in the public interest? Like some people had a crack and some people in the media had a crack at Sam McClure for breaking confidences in the investigation into Taylor Walker. How's that look now? Like as if that wasn't in the public interest. So sometimes journalists get a hard rap from the public. Uh, he's done his job exceptionally well here and it does remove the doubt over all of the Carlton players. Mm. Liam Jones, 19 games in 2021. Good player. Uh, averaging 12 disposals into the six marks per game coming across from the Bulldogs. Played about 60 games there. He's not far away from reaching 100 games for the Blues. He's really important. If they're living absolutely in the now where they want to play finals next year, he's really, really important to their back line. Well, yeah, him and Weedering are, are the keys to their whole back line because Pl Plowman is not someone who you can rely on. I, I, I finished hyping their best and fairest, as he always does, Lockie Plowman. I, I, I can't see how, but I feel for Michael Voss and the whole of the Carlton footy club who you know we've spoken about at length the, the 20 years of misery that they've been through and I, I did see a lot of Carlton supporters because Fox footy went through the, the 18 clubs and how their vaccination status is going it's a bit boring really so I'm a bit fatigued about talking about vaccination status but um, all the 16 clubs that don't really have an issue including Port Adelaide and the Crows there's two one of them's Carlton the other is St Kilda but there's some uncertainty around it and the Carlton fans are on there going of course of course, of there's 16 clubs that don't have an issue. Of course, we are one of the clubs that uh, have got an issue with this. But uh, Liam Jones finished eighth in Carlton's Best and Ferris last year.